Hi guys, welcome back to Infinite Possibilities, the podcast where we explore the lives of amazing people, their choices, challenges and opportunities. And today I have a very special guest, Darren. Hello. Hi, thank you so much for being here. That's okay. Yeah, so Darren, we have a very interesting story about how we met. Why don't you kick us off? Well, I work in the library at UQ where um, Karen is a student and she came to the desk to find out how much, how long her free stuff lasts <laughs> once she's um, uh, graduated. And I s- disappointed her and said it doesn't last forever. Oh, that sucks. And um, that's how we met. Yeah, but apparently my UQ email might last forever. They're in that sort of yeah. negotiation phase. Yeah. So fingers crossed, UQ. <laughs> it should last forever because people are very unhappy about losing their emails. So um, you should you keep that at least. Yeah, that sounds good. And so when I approached you, like when I like, you know, casually on the end of our conversation, I was like, oh, so I have a podcast, Darren. You'd make a great guest. Want to be on it? What was your, what was running through your mind? Um, it was, God, this girl can talk and she's so, like, because most students I deal with are not interested in me whatsoever. Not that I'm saying you were, but <laughs> I'm saying that was so out of the blue that I thought, I'm going to say yes. Whoa, that's mm. very good. But it wasn't a quick yes. It was like, I was like, I could see you hesitating. I thought I... I frowned know, at you. Yeah. Didn't know I went. Yeah. I think I pulled you over the line when I said, oh, if you don't like it, we scrap it. No questions asked. Yeah, that's always a good out. Yeah. 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 And then I had to be like, oh, Darren, I'll send you a link. You know, promise it's legit. And then you're like, I'll apply on the day. But you applied the next morning, Darren. I did. (laughs) So in your mind at that point in time, before I, you know, sent you the link, were you already like a solid yes? Or was it after watching my other amazing interviews? You're like, yeah. No, no, I didn't. I kind of just glanced at them. Yeah because I didn't want to spoil it. Oh, sure. But I thought, I just thought that you were, you were very, I was impressed by the way that you could talk and get stuff out of me. I thought, oh my God, this girl's going to go far (laughs) in life. So I want to see how she, um, you know, what she can do. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, hearing that is so touching. Wait, so was this before or after I asked you about, um, Um, being on my podcast was this when I was like when I was asking you about my free stuff were you like this girl is going to go far in life yes exactly (laughs) yeah about the free stuff well I I knew what you were asking and it was a it was a good question and um, most students just won't ask one question let alone like a lot of questions and it's like it's just really refreshing to to get someone who kind of can kind of get what they want and be entertaining and like, oh. what's the word? Um, just engaging, just yeah. like engaging with another person, you know, because oh. it's, I mean, some people just have that natural ability to kind of engage with somebody, whoever they are. And I think you've got that. Oh, thank you. So how could I resist? Yeah. Oh. To be fair, I'm not always that engaging. Depends my mood. But I actually did have so many questions lined up for you that day. Yeah. So, yeah, I had to, I had to be engaging. I, if it's like a one question, I'd be like, oh, hey, when is like my UQ account for email expired? Then I'll be done, right? But the fact that I had so many, I didn't want you to be annoyed. So I had to put on a performance. <laughs> yeah, well, it was good. It worked. <laughs> yeah. And here we are today. So this is officially our third time meeting. Do you remember our second time meeting? Tell yes, I do, oh, I do, good, I do. Good, good. I do. Should I tell that story too? Yes. <laughs> okay, we, um, one day this week we had a, a fire alarm. And so there was a evacuation tones and so forth. So the whole library was evacuated because there actually was a fire and <clears throat> I was sent to guard the entrance <laughs> Wow! <laughs> and stop students coming in. Um, I was supposed to wear my red hat, but yeah. I hate putting on yeah. the red hat. Not and then you came in. Yeah. You came in to, to try and 
To save the day, they say. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, no, stop. <laughs> the library is on fire. Um, and you said, okay, that's fair enough. And yeah, so that's our second um, encounter. Yeah, very, very cool. Yeah. And then um, Darren, he said he had a very interesting career life and that I'm going to be very, very surprised. So stay tuned for the face. Yeah. So we're going to start from the beginning. Darren, what kind of child were you like growing up? I was a very shy, overly sensitive introvert. Oh. I still am, basically. But yeah, just a... a a dreamer. Oh. Um, Tell me very what? overactive imagination. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, do you know what the your, basics? Do you know what your Maya Briggs personality is? Um, INFJ. INFJ. I I think it's INSF. Maybe I can't remember. I-N- oh, because oh. I haven't done it for a long time. Wow. So you know what you're going to be doing tonight, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do, and it's nothing, so yeah, I'm looking forward minutes. to that. Yeah, don't forget to send through the results. <laughs> oh, okay. Because my vet right now is INFJ. INFJ, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, I know it's IN something, something. Yeah. I know there is an F in there. Yeah, wow, hmm. solid. After three encounters, yes. Yeah, so you were shy with a lot of... Um, with a big imagination, so does that mean that you were really into books naturally? I was, yeah. I was, I was, that was the one thing that I was really good at, was reading from a very early age. And it was very, um, like it took no effort at all to mm-hmm. learn to read and, and I was always very good at it. Um, and then, you know, kind of making up your own stories and stuff. So, and you get a bit of, positive feedback and you go, oh, that's, that's my thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's cool. Hmm. Um, what about in terms of friend making, being shy and sensitive? I feel like that is not the recipe. No, it's not. Um, I suppose I had two brothers, so I didn't really need friends. <laughs> Excellent. Older or younger? Older. One younger and one older. Oh, middle child. Yeah. Um, and they seemed to gang up on me a lot. I was oh. always the the odd one out, um, which was weird. But yeah, yeah, it was funny. Like back in those days, um, like I never really we ne- didn't go to other people's houses, my friends' houses. Sometimes you did, but people would just play outside, and you might run into them. Yeah, Where, you know there was no kind of your parents didn't make play dates for you like yeah. how we have to do these days. Yeah. <laughs> Um, because it was a country town. I grew up in the country, so it was very... Whereabouts? Um, just south of the border in New South Wales, Lismore, a town called Lismore, near there, country. Yeah, interesting. And so as a child, did you enjoy school much? Um, I did. I did at first. I, I was okay at school and I kind of enjoyed it. And then I ran into some teachers who were um, really pretty awful. Oh, I was like, you can swear. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. PG, I was going to say they were bastards, and, yeah. they, and they were. Um, In what way can you share a story if you're happy to? Oh, they were just, um, one in particular, he was just, just a nasty, um, sneering, sarcastic bully. Oh. Yeah. So, cause I, and because I was sensitive and shy and, you know, um, that just scarred me yeah. and kind of retreated into... Further. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a shame. Because um, every other teacher was pretty good, really, yeah. except for him and, I mean... Was it more to do with the fact that you were quite shy, so that was sort of his point of leverage, or like I mean, you were like you seem like you were, might have been like a pretty compliant child, so I don't know what he could have. You weren't those class clowns, so that wouldn't have given him reason to sort of 
maybe poke fun? No, it's weird because I was very compliant. Yeah. And, and well, I, I kind of, I was much more outgoing when I was comfortable in my classroom. Yeah. Up until, like, um, funnily, female teachers were fine. So I had male teachers in year five, four and five, and they're the ones that I really had trouble with because they were just different to the um, female teachers, and it's weird. Um, yeah. Male teachers have this kind of, well, back then, some male teachers were just, you know, it was all discipline. Yeah. Like, back in my day, like, you could be threatened with the cane. Oh. Yeah. And the teacher would take kids to the back of the room and cane them. And I was terrified of this, you know? Yeah. Um, so have you been caned? That's what we all want to know. No. Whoa, no, I good managed, on you. I managed Surprise. to avoid it because <laughs> I was good most of the time. So yeah. a couple of times where I was naughty, basically because I got was being, um, you know, prompted by other people to do something bad and I did it. Ooh. Wait, wait, what kind of bad stuff are we getting into? Uh, just silly Thinking. things. Writing really um, uh, oh. bad language notes and oh. handing it to a girl, oh. something like that, oh, which okay. I got caught doing. Yeah. It wasn't my idea, Yeah. but I got caught, and then ordinarily that, that would be a caning offence. Yeah. But I, I managed to get out of it because I, I was a good boy. Yeah. That's interesting. Compliance can sort of be like a two-way thing where you're really compliant, you, you follow all the rules, but when someone sort of, you know, sort of takes advantage of the compliance, they can also make you do bad stuff. So yeah. Both sides. Are very, they call it very easily led. Yeah. Very e yeah, I was. I was very easily led. Yeah. Was it because, like, you didn't know how to say no or...? Yeah. yeah. No. Yes. <laughs> no. It's because I didn't know how to... I didn't know how to say no, basically, but yeah. I was just a kid, so. Yeah, and then you feel like at that moment there's probably more stronger consequences in the short term for not Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so interesting, just kind of curious, do you sort of know maybe why you were so sensitive as a child? Um, no, <laughs> no, I think... Really, I, I mean, my my mum was a very shy um, woman. Like she was always very, very, like painfully shy when she was growing up. Yeah. I thought if you can inherit inherit <laughs> shyness, that's where I got it from. Oh, interesting. What about your older brother and younger brother? Um, they were pretty much far more outgoing than I was, mm. uh, especially my younger brother. <laughs> he was you know, like, you know, the cheeky younger yeah. brother. Um, no, they're quite different. I'm more, I'm more similar to my sister. Oh, you have a sister? My, my younger sister, yeah. Wow. We're very similar kind of um, personalities, really. Oh. That's cool. Mm. So would you say your personality, your younger sisters, is more aligned with your mum's and then your older brother and your younger brother is sort of aligned with your dad's? Yeah, on a very basic level. level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, that's cool. And so when you were in primary school, high school, in terms of careers, what was running through your mind, if anything? Um, writing, basically. Writing. I wanted to be a writer from very young how, how Nothing young else. Um, probably like seven or eight. Oh. Mm. Um. What was it that you loved about writing, reading? Well, because I'd sort of I'd always read, and a couple of times when I wrote my own stories. You know, as you do in primary school, you know, you, you the teacher says, just make something up or write a report on your holidays or something, what you did. And I found that just very easy and very, there's just some, some reward in it, you know. 
Um, and it, it's, you know, like you do a lot of things in when you're young that you're not good at. Yeah. And then, you, you know, you might try it again later. But if you find something that you're good at and it doesn't take much effort, yeah. you go, wow, that's great. Um, and I, I, I really don't remember um, when I made the connection that these books that I loved writing and all the rest of it, that I could do that. Mm. It was just like always in my mind that I could. So, um, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then in terms of um, writing, was it like you loved like the end product or you loved... Um, the process more? Um, it would have to, I think, I mean, obviously I like, I loved reading other people's books. Yeah. Um, but then when you get into writing, it is, it is kind of addictive, like, like anything mm. that's enjoyable, like it, it is hard work, but it's creative stuff. Um, and there's there's something about creating a work of art, like if you want, if you're a painter, if you're a musician, yeah. any thought, any kind of creating something out of nothing, yeah. which is really yeah, addictive. It's quite yeah, it's it's really um, yeah. It's hard to explain, but it, it is really very satisfying um, to kind of create something out of nothing. Yeah, and almost like having that sole ownership over, like, this is my work. Yeah. Having something to show for it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and I think that it, being a writer particularly is, because it's very, um, it's only you. Yeah. Like, it's not a committee. It's like, <laughs> you don't have to think about anybody else's opinion. Like, say, a filmmaker has to, deal with a whole lot of other people's yeah. opinions and people on set the actors and yeah so music's a bit the same yeah but writing is like you, you know you, nobody is telling me how to how to do this yeah um i'm not listening to anybody else's opinion of course the more you go like you you do have to listen to people's opinions to get better yeah which is you know something that you learn um, but you don't have to. You can yeah. be arrogant as yeah. you like about it. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah, yeah. And does that mean that, like, maybe writing is a bit of, a, like, a lonely process? Yeah, it is. It, it, um... I never used to struggle with that, the, um, the solitary nature of it. I, I used to, well, because because I, I was married and I had, you know, my my wife kind of was always there around, yeah. So I could kind of go and work and then, but I knew someone was there. Yeah. Um. These yeah. these days I don't have that, so I I find it much harder. It's it's weird, it yeah. is weird, because I like talking to people. I, yeah. I like. Because I've done this job for a long time, where you you're always talking to people, and I've got some really good buddies here at the library, yeah, that's really good. and I love see, coming in to see them. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I think if I wrote a novel and made a million dollars, yeah, I'd I'd find it hard to quit this job, oh. which is really which is really weird. Mm. Wow. Damn, but that's really amazing because in some ways it's almost saying that you are living your best life right now. If, you know, if finances, if money wasn't like a problem, then you would still be wanting to do what you do. Yeah, I mean, ideally I'd, I'd probably like to be writing more, <laughs> producing more because yeah. um, I haven't for a long time, which is which there's a lot of reasons for, but yeah. um, ideally, like, I'd like to, like, finish books and publish them, but yeah. still work here. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. It is, it's really weird. It's, um... Yeah, 
Yeah, but YouTube would love you for that. Like, imagine if one day Dad became famous and he's just like, um, book signings and help desk over here. <laughs> Do you know how many people would sign up to go to UQ? Well, it is weird because when, because I did actually, once I left high school, I, I, you know, I thought, oh, well, I'll go to university. But there was no writing courses like there are now. Mm. So I started a Bachelor of Arts where you're basically reading other people's books. Yeah. But you don't get to choose them. Mm. So I didn't do very well as, as a student, basically. Terribly, actually. Yeah. Even though I tried a couple of times and I dropped out tw twice. Um, but it's it's funny that you know, even if writing courses had been around when I was doing it, I, th I don't think it would have worked for me anyway. But um, because there's an argument that you can't teach people to, people either have a natural gift at it yeah. or they don't. Oh. And because there's heaps and heaps of people who come here to, to do the writing courses. Um, and that's great, but I don't know whether I could do it. Yeah, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to take students <laughs> individual one on one to teach them how to write. I yeah. think that would be awful. Yeah, and I guess. Um, yeah, I guess maybe that is what makes people like your writing because it's so unique. It can't be taught, and it's it's so personal sometimes. Why do you think that um, maybe the curricula was sort of hard? for you to sort of succeed? Was it kind of like it was too restrictive? You're like, no, ma'am, I want to write it this way because of X, Y, Z. And she's like, well, according to Google, <laughs> is it, yeah, why is that? Um, it's, it's weird. I mean, there's a whole, I mean, most universities in the world now have a writing course. Um, and technical stuff like how to construct sentences and all that kind of thing. Um, I think the best way to learn that is to read other people's writing. Um, I don't know, this, that's a long topic yeah. and I'm very opinionated about it. Yeah. Um, Can you give me the three sentence highlight? <laughs> um, Three sentence highlight. I, I think, well, the world has changed a lot since I was in my 20s, say. Yeah. People don't seem to have that ambition to be a writer and write novels, say. Yeah. It's, it's a much more kind of, I don't know, it's, do they want to write for TV or write films or... Yeah. Um, Writing is like an old art form, kind of. Yeah, it is, and it's it's not dead yet, but, yeah. you know, I think there'll always be a place for telling stories. But, I mean, I, I would just say don't bother with a writing course. Oh. I, I know it's controversial. Yeah. Because it's, it's a subject that um, students want to do because they think it might, well, it does help them, but it's never going to, like, it's not going to, nice. you're still going to have to come up with everything yourself. Yeah. And write it yourself. Yeah. I guess it would teach you all the basics, and if you want the basics for the foundation, but in terms of maybe what will make you excellent, what will make you, um, you know, like, yeah, famous, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, there's there's an argument that, people it kind of creates people who kind of think the same and yeah. write a bit the same yeah. um but you know i don't know yeah. i mean i think but then you have success stories like um people who've been to but i, I don't know whether the the success is because they went to a writing course or because they were just good and it was always oh, going to happen that's interesting correlation and causation Hmm. Yeah, correlation and causation. Yeah, <laughs> good stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Hmm. And then, so tell me about dropping out twice. Like, I mean, once, like, why go back and then why drop it twice? 
What? So you were, um, by the way, were you enrolled at UQ? The second time I was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the first time when I left school, I, um, I um, started at University of New South Wales and that was just a Bachelor of Arts. But I was the first, my, my brother, elder brother went to art school, which is not the same thing as going to a proper university. Yeah. He was painting. Oh, wow. Your family's artistic. They are a bit, yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, cool. He was painting, so that's completely different to going to do English or something. Yeah. So we really had, my parents certainly never went to university. It's, nobody did. Nobody I knew had ever been to university. Mm. So I didn't know what to do. And I had no idea. I had no one to really help me. There was no internet. Yeah. Like, you got a handbook at the beginning. You, you found a handbook. You tried to work out how to do, how to enroll and all the rest of it. Yeah. But um, anyway, so I tried and then I, I went okay. But I was just, too, there was just too many distractions and... Um, distractions as in... Please. Um, drinking in hotels oh, and going good stuff, and, and seeing bands and yeah. and you know you didn't doing. Say girls, no. Uh, <laughs> I was still too shy by that time. God. Yeah. Ooh. And when I look back at photos of myself, I was like, Oh my God, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, just go and talk to the girl. Yeah. Because look, <laughs> look at you. Nah. <laughs> Interesting. So it then didn't work out so well. And then um, and then what made you decide to come back and enrol at UQ? Um, <clears throat> so between the first dropout, I went and, well, I got a job with um, the post office actually because mm. it was like, you know, it was an, an ad in the paper and I thought oh, I could do that, of course. Yeah. And I thought... I actually had a thought that, because I knew I was shy and um, I thought, well, a post office, you're going to be talking to people all the time, all day. Mm. That will help. Mm. That will give me a, some kind of skill as to how to talk to people, how to talk to anybody. Um, so I did that for a few years in Sydney and then um, walked out of that job one day. Um, was it dramatic? Like, I quit! <laughs> well, it, it was a bit because I I, I was trained to, to be on the front desk. Ooh. You know, like yeah. dealing with money and stuff. And one day they sent me out the back to sort mail and the woman who was in charge of the sorting area thought I was too slow and basically said you're too slow. And I was just like so offended. Yeah. You know, that I thought, you know, I bugger you. Yeah. you know, and I walked out. Oh. Um, yeah, so I had a couple of jobs. And then I, I worked for te Telecom, Telstra, as it's yeah. called now for a while. And that was also, um, you know, customer service type yeah. things talking to people, listening to their complaints and whatever. But, and then I, then I met my wife in, in Sydney and moved up here. And I was working, I think I was, I had a job up here. I worked for the Department of Social Security, Centrelink, they call it now. Yeah. Um, but then I decided, oh, well, I've got to go back. I've got to have another go at uni. So yeah, I, I applied and got in here. Oh. And this was the same problem though. It was like, I did an English course and a history, I think. And it was okay, but um, I was a creative person. And to me, there's not much if you want to write an essay about someone else's novel mm. and um, analyze it, that's just not me. Yeah. You know, that's just not me at all. 
but what, actually when I was when I was still a student here, um, I was actually writing a novel, and around the same time I entered that novel into this competition for unpublished manuscripts, and I won. Wow! There mm. you go to all of um, your English teachers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and how was that? Must have been like the first maybe real taste of success and validation for you. Absolutely, yeah. It was. Yeah. It was really amazing because, um, I mean, it, it's one of the most, you know, sought after prizes for it's it's for writers under thirty five. So you've got back then everybody who was writing a novel who was under thirty five who hadn't been published was entering their thing, their, their novel into it. And not only did you get money, Ooh, but you got just... published. <laughs> 15,000. Wow, that's Which is good. okay. That is solid. Yeah, it was all right. Oh, wow. But the most more important thing was that they, the publisher would publish your novel. Yeah. Um, cool. Which was the main aim. Yeah. And so that was like... 95, mm. 95, 1995. Yeah, yeah, a long oh, time ago now, cool. but um, yeah, so that my novel came out, yeah. was published, it's in the library over here. Really, yeah, are you gonna give me a signed copy? We'll talk about it later. Yeah, <laughs> we can talk about that later. Yeah, wait, and can you take me to that? Um, what do you remember what you were doing at that time when you won, and how did you celebrate after? Did you jump up and down and scream? <laughs> <laughs> I think I was, um, I was working, so, um, and I remember, you know, it was just a normal work day, I think, and, and at then, UQ, not yet, not, not at UQ, at social, um, Centrelink, basically. Yeah. And I think it was, for some reason, I was not not at work that day. And and somebody rang me, <clears throat> and it was the um, the managing director of um, this publishing company, and he said, "Oh, you know," told me who he was, and then he said, "You've won." <laughs> and um, it was a fair amount of disbelief. And then, okay, this is embarrassing, <laughs> but, and I don't do this very often, but I really just, just bawled my eyes out. Whoa! Mm. Damn. Yeah. That's so cool. Was it like the accumulation of like, you know, everything? Like yeah, you know? it was, it was, um, you know, there'd been obstacles and like, you know, I'd, but for that couple of years, like 18 months or so that it took to write it, yeah. you know, was really, it was great. It was awesome. It was like, you know, and, but it was just, you know, the whole kind of ambition from when you're young yeah. to kind of, to be a writer, to have a, you know, published and what have you, but. And then suddenly this guy's going, yep, it's happening. Yeah, it's so surreal. It was really surreal and it was, um, yeah, yeah I, I just, I really remember bawling my yeah. eyes out about oh, it. I wish I could see that. No, kidding, no. kidding, kidding. <laughs> Wait, and so how old were you at that time? Um, 26. Yeah, Twenty six. That's so cool because you had that dream from eight and then 26, like yeah. 18 years of like, Hoping in 18 years of people being able to see it. Oh, and what's the book called? It's called Swimming in Silk. Oh, you told me about it when we were walking here. Yeah. Through. And give me a three minute summary. <laughs> no spoilers, no spoilers. <laughs> um, I suppose that one, the first one is writing about what you know. So it's kind of set in that area where I grew up, which is um, northern north coast of New South Wales and very roughly based on a few people that I knew. Ooh, and scandalous. Not really scandalous, but it had some of the elements that I was kind of going for, kind of mysterious. 
Um, there's really not much plot to it, <laughs> looking back. There's, there's not a lot of plot. It's more character. Um, not a lot happens. Um, <laughs> Why do you think you won? Honest. Well, I think I won because, not because of my plotting and, and anything like that, but um, I can write. I can write kind of engaging sentences and um, engaging characters, hopefully. Mm. Um, and it goes back to being... Like, it, I think it'd be hard to be an extroverted writer mm -hmm. because to be a good writer, I think you just have to shut up and listen yeah. to people. Yeah. Instead of talking all the time, mm -hmm. like I'm doing now. <laughs> good stuff. You have to stop, listen, actually really listen closely to how people speak. I love dialogue. Yeah. I really love dialogue. And it's, it's, it's not easy to do, but if you don't listen to what people say and how they say it, like, I think it would be much harder. Um, but, I, yeah, I think that's, that's, I think, why it won. Yeah. Um, yeah, it got that, like, nuance. And, yeah, you really mm. can, um, yeah, like, you can, like, being able to observe is really yeah. crucial. And then you've got, all, you know, your description and how you yeah. create a scene and all that kind of thing. But I think what they're looking for more than anything is just potential. Yeah. Like, oh, oh this, this guy is like, this bit's terrible and that bit's terrible. But, yeah. you know, maybe two or three novels down the track, he'll be really good. Oh, that's cool. Spotting talent. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Because a lot of very famous writers have won that award oh. in Australia. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not one of them, but... Yes, come on. Maybe one day, but... Yeah. Um, um, yes. Tim, Tim Winton won it. Oh, cool. Um, Andrew McGahn, who was a very famous Queensland writer. Um, Kate Grenville. Oh. Um, yeah. People like that, but... Um, and me. Yeah, and you, yeah. joining the list. Yeah, it's a good yeah. list to be on. Yeah, and so what happened after that? Did that, did that make you drop out of UQ? <laughs> it did, actually. Really? Yeah. Because you got the val... Because maybe in some ways you went to university sort of to get that validation and then you got it and... Well, it, it was like um, I... I really knew, as if I didn't already, that kind of academic writing about creative things was not my thing. That I was a creative writer, full stop. Yeah. And I think even, I, I don't think when at that stage there still wasn't a writing um, degree. Mm. So I was still kind of stuck. I was like, well, now I could say, well, I'm going to do this. I don't need to go to university to learn how to do it. Yeah. I've done it yeah. kind of thing. I must be doing something right, which, and I think, you know, when you're in your 20s too, I was, not that I went to my head, but I thought, well, I can do this, you know, yeah. like, um, um. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and then so after that, um, when you dropped out, did you continue writing and what was the journey from then? Um, I, oh, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> um, I did. I, I actually, not, I, well, I dropped out and that was an easy decision. Easy? Mm. Really? Because it was a Bachelor of Arts. Like it was never going to re result in a, a um, a proper job. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Like it wasn't. It's like it's not like learning to be um, an accountant. You yeah. Going to be yeah. an accountant. Um, I mean, it's. I'm not saying that it's 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 a waste of time, but it, 
I needed, because my wife was a um, social worker, yeah. so, um, you know, that's something that you can be when you've finished your degree. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I kept working for a few years and I was basically trying to write my second novel as quickly as I could. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't particularly quick thing to do. Um, so I think from between about 95, 96, I can't remember what I was doing. <laughs> I was writing. Yeah. But we ended up in London. Ooh. So my wife, um, I don't know why, but she, she wanted to go overseas and work as a social worker for a while. Yeah. So we went, went to, to London and she was working as, as a social worker in London and I was writing my novel on a very, very primitive <laughs> um, IBM laptop. Wow, during, during very the cool, very cool. Yeah, and I, it was, that was kind of um, 99. So basically I wrote my second novel in London quite homesick yeah. and because um, I didn't like London <laughs> very much yeah. but part of the part of the um, the plan for me over there was to try and get an agent yeah. so when I had enough I think I may, I may have finished it but you basically take you send off the first 10 pages to agents and there was there was hundreds of agents in London, so you, mm. it's really hard to know where to start, but you just send out your first 10 pages and then they say, oh yes, can I see the rest or not? So I spent, you know, a couple of months kind of delivering my manuscript yeah. to, you know, these, these different agencies in London and, you know, here you go, <laughs> thanks. Um, and then, um, this particular agent, he loved it, and he he said, "Yep, I, I want to represent you and so, so forth." And did you blow your eyes out? No, I didn't. Oh, sad. <laughs> no, I was kind of. Oh, that's good. I thought, you know. Yeah. Um. I mean, it was good. Yeah. That was definitely. It you was, were elated inside. Yeah, it was like. I mean, it was, it's not easy to get an agent yeah. in London. It's oh, not because, um, you know, it's, everybody wants an agent. Everybody yeah. thinks they can write, you know, back then. There's probably less agents now, but um, it was still really hard to do. And so once we'd kind of fixed up a few things, I'd rewritten a bit of it. He sent it to, um, because he, he was such a, an, an amazing guy that he knew everybody. Oh, that's like it was, so cute. That was like, oh, wow. He, he, he knew um, the publisher, this publishing house called Picador. Mm -hmm. And I grew up loving Picador novels. Oh, wow. They're not so big now, but yeah. he, he knew this guy. Like yeah. he was in New, he was in New York, and um, I thought, oh man, if he can't get me a deal, nobody yeah. can. And then they had a little kind of there was a couple of two or three publishers wanted to publish it, nice. so they kind of he tried to get the best you know the best price, yeah. and and then you know signed a publishing deal for Ooh. it. Exciting. And the book name, sir? This one was Angel Rock, oh. which I've never, I, I've, I have had problems with titles. I, I never, I wasn't really happy with either of them, but I was like, uh oh. Swimming in Silk, I find that's so beautiful. Yeah, people like that. Um, yeah. Um, Angel Rock sounds kind of like a dichotomy, kind of. Well, Angel, and then it's like, Rock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it makes it interesting. 
but now nowadays I picture kind of like this um, a rock band with yeah. angels. Angel, oh. Yeah, which I don't like, but yeah. it actually refers to this rock that looks like an angel oh. above this town. Oh. Yeah, so yeah. that's why this town is called Angel Rock because of this rock that looks like an angel. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Mm. And then what happened? You published um, it. <clears throat> yeah, so he, and then it was published, that one was published 2002. Oh. And he managed to, he, he, so he sold it to HarperCollins in the UK. Wow. And they published it there and it was published here through HarperCollins. Oh. And he sold it to an American publishing and it was published in America as well. Um, So I don't think it did as well as they thought wanted it to. Yeah. But that happens. Yeah, out of your control. It is. It's kind of. It's funny because these days, um, Australian kind of crime novels and stuff are really big. Yeah. Like, like they don't really need to. If you write a good one, they'll sell all over the world. Mm. Like it's not really a regional thing anymore yeah um but anyway that happened but i still got paid so nicely yeah and and then oh my god and then my son was born <gasps> oh, in 2005 beautiful. did you cry no i think i was just a bit shell-shocked by all <laughs> that yeah. yeah i was writing i was trying to write number three from from, you know, from 2002 until when he was born. Yeah. Um, and, well, that was the, that's the end of my publishing history, yeah. basically, until, I mean, I've been writing a lot of that time. Yeah. But that's what, this is where the story gets a bit sad. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm ready. Well, it's just that I, I've, I haven't finished anything since then. Yeah. And... It's, it's, it's a kind of, basically life gets in the way sometimes. Yeah. Um, and sometimes no matter what you do and how much you try and change that, you know, you have to do things like you have to, um, um, you don't have, well, the thing is that writing is, is a very selfish occupation. You, you have to like, like the writing world is full of writers who, whose partners leave them, yeah. whose kids they don't talk to. Yeah. It's really, it's quite sad, but it's because it's so... Isolating. Yeah, and, and but you have to choose that. Like, you, like people choose the, the art form. Um, and it's a bit, you become very self-absorbed. Yeah. And I never wanted to be one of those people. Yeah. I, I was like, no, my family come first. Yeah. Um, and then writing will have to come second. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, sometimes like the more pain and the more like suffering you inflict upon yourself actually probably will make you a better writer make you a better artist in many ways so i think so i i i do think so i mean i've kind of from then until now which is a long time ago now i've i have still been writing yeah and the the writing i do now i think is 10 times better Ooh. than anything i've done before yeah. but it's just that kind of finishing it yeah and then in the meantime like the whole world has changed yeah like people crazy. people don't read books anymore yeah do you know like they do but it's not not in the same way yeah they skim it you know they just yeah yeah it's even though i think they're still like it's a it's a one-on-one -on -one kind of um it's you and the author yeah there's nothing else and 
it's a very kind of intimate thing. Yeah. Whereas watching a, f a film on Netflix is like completely different. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I can, you know, I mean, it may never, um, I don't think it's ever going to come back to what it was. Yeah. Um, but people still want to hear stories. Yeah. Which is not, I'm not saying like you should write a novel hoping that will be turned into a Netflix film. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But you can't make a living. Um, Out of solely writing. Yeah, like it, it's very difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I guess if what you love is like, writing is like storytelling, if the essence maybe, unfortunately, it might have to be transferred onto another kind of media. Yeah, but that's right. Yeah. But and I, I, guess, I, I mean, that's, that's fine. It's like... Um, yeah, but not that intimate as just you and the author, right? It's like a very personal, like Netflix, you know, you have a bunch of your friends, and you're all laughing and you're watching it. It can be sort of like a communal thing. And then, yeah, but writing is, you actually have to take the time to sit down. You can't, you can't like sometimes read with so many distractions. Yeah. Like how you can yeah. watch TV with everything happening. Yeah, and like one of the big influences on me was um, Lord of the Rings. Oh. Nice. Which I read when I was probably about 15 or 16. Oh. So that whole book, and it was like, you know, I imagined everything in it. Wow. What hobbits look like. Yeah. You know, all that stuff. Every every detail. Um, and then somebody makes a film <laughs> out of it, you know? Yeah. Um, but my version was better. Oh, kind of yeah. Thing. Because it was my, yeah. it was my imagination, that, and like you can't, yeah. like that's kind of irreplaceable. Like, you know, you've got your, it's unique to you. Yeah. How you picture something in your head when you read it. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, now everyone has the same, you know, face for each character. Yeah. <laughs> which, which, yeah, I guess, kind of kills its uniqueness. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and then you've kind of, I mean, Peter Jackson made his version, what he wanted to, how, how he wanted it to look, and that's good. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, fair enough. But, yeah. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and so do you think maybe also you're a bit of a perfectionist, so it's hard to finish? Do you think that comes into play? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it's so frustrating. Yeah. It's like I've the frustrating thing is 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 sometimes when I pick up a book, fiction, or because I used to work in the Friar Library. Yeah. And it collects every um, fiction book basically published by an Australian. And so I used to look through a lot of stuff. And then I'd open it up and I'd read a few sentences and I'd start going, oh, why wouldn't you, why would you, why wouldn't you, yeah. you know, like, why would you do that? Can't yeah. you see how awful that word is? Yeah. You know, and that gets frustrating because sometimes you just got to put your mouth, money where your mouth is yeah. and, you know, do it yourself. But it's also that feeling like, well, why am I worrying about every little detail when yeah. they're not? Yeah. You know, like they're getting published. Um, they're making money. They might be making a bit of money. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's. Yeah. Don't worry, I, I've, you know, I've spent far too long thinking about these things. Yeah. Um, and I always just say, one day, one yeah. day. So um, should we sort of action that one day? So, you know, you know, do you have a, like a year that maybe you would hope to release it that we can sort of semi, semi commit on camera? <laughs> <laughs> What's the year? What year is it? 2021? Um, 2021. Okay, let's say 2023. Yeah. 2023, that sounds good. Yeah. Do you, are you thinking like first half of the year, second half of the year? Do you have a Do you have a favorite month, by the way? Um, spring. Spring. September. September. Yeah. September. October. 
September mm. 2023. So stay tuned, <laughs> right? Yeah, and we're nearly at the end, so we've got to round off a few questions. So firstly, my audience wants to know how you met your wife, because being a shy, introverted, <laughs> do you have any tips for our fellas out there? <laughs> um, well, I actually met her because a friend, well, one of the guys I was living with in like a share house, um, one day he, he just appeared with these two girls. <laughs> So if you can get your friends just to bring girls back to your house, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, so that was it. Like he 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 basically just brought them to back back to watch a movie or something. Yeah, a VHS cassette movie, you know. Um, and yeah, and, and she was one of them. Yeah. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Did you choose the right one? <laughs> kidding, um, kidding, kidding. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was it was a soulmate thing. It was like, oh, yeah, it was beautiful. like. Mm. Yeah, and did your um, friend end up with the other girl or no? No, he didn't. Um, well, one of them, yeah, they had they. Another friend of mine and, and the other girl had, had a kind of relationship for a while, but yeah. um, no, she, she ended up with somebody else and had yeah. five children Whoa. with him, but... Um, yeah, cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then how did you end up at UQ Help Desk? What was that journey in like a quick uh, two minutes? Okay, two minutes. Um, yeah. <laughs> so when my son was quite young, yeah. I really just needed a job. Yeah. And... Because I'm, I've dropped out twice, so I had no qualifications and no real skills except being a writer. Yeah. And it doesn't get you very far. I'm, you know, yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately. But um, so there was a job going here with just shelving, reshelving books, and I got that. So I was oh. a, like a part-time shelver when people, when you know, a lot more books got borrowed. Um, and then I just went on to the desk because I thought I could do that. Yeah. And I'm still here. Oh, when did you start? What year? 2007. Whoa, mm. very cool. And so why do you still, like, why if you won the lottery would you still want to continue in two minutes? <laughs> um, the people, right? Well, I think you, if you're married or you, you have a long-term relationship, you get a lot of stuff from that, yeah. which you don't even realise that you do. You get all their friends and family and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, and I've never been, been very good at that kind of thing. Um, but we had a... a um, a person work here. She was American. And she wasn't. She was not going to stay for very long. But she was. She said something. Cause she'd always worked in libraries, and she said, "You know, the reason I always work in libraries is she was a librarian." But she said, "It's just the people. Like, mm -hmm. you get these really interesting people, who, um, like, all sorts of creative people like me, who can't get a." You can't make a living from their, what they really want to do. Yeah. So they have this job, which is kind of related. <laughs> um, so you get all these really... Um, basically what I'm saying is, like, I've got some really good buddies here. Yeah. And I get to see them every day. Yeah, so and, you know, it was hard during uh, lockdown, yeah. working from home and all that. But um, so that's why... Even though if I had a million dollars tomorrow, I'd still want to come and see them. Yeah. And it wouldn't be the same if I, you know, um, resigned. Yeah. Like, it is weird. No, yeah, but it's, yeah. I mean, I guess, like, if tomorrow, if all your friends resign, then would you still want to stay? Maybe not. No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Yeah. So what about the job itself? 
do you enjoy it or it's just kind of like a means to an end, helping students kind of figure out when they're free self-exposed? <laughs> um, I do, I, I kind of do enjoy it. Like I, um, like students like yourself, I really enjoy the most because <laughs> um, like you get a lot of students who are like, oh, I'm not going to go and talk to that old person because <laughs> they're old and like they wouldn't understand what I want and what I need. But hey, try me, I will. Yeah. You know, like I've been here. I know how everything works. Yeah. Like why not ask me? Yeah. Um, but I just like meeting like some, like because this is a university, so you got like really intelligent, smart, talented people come here. And like some of them are just really like of course you have the occasional asshole and we yeah. do have those but more often than not we're just lovely people wow. and like young and full of energy and like creativity and um they haven't had too many bad experiences yet and they're not <laughs> jaded and yeah, you know cynical. like i am cynical <laughs> yeah um yeah, so that's the bit I enjoy the most. Yeah. The students, really. Um, really interesting. And they're really interesting. Well, not they're not all really interesting. Yeah. Librarians <laughs> are not that... No, I won't say that. No. Yeah. <laughs> some of them are lovely. Yeah. But some of them, you know, yeah. not everybody's going to be nice. Yeah, a bit of both. So, do you work every day, nine to five? I want to, like, check out that frequency of interesting students in your ships. So, do you work every day? Um, I, I do work every day, but it's not always on the desk. So, we do shifts from home, like yeah. on, the, on the phone or chat. Yeah. Oh, I've messaged plenty of times as well. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, so annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I much prefer talking face to face with people. Yeah. Yeah. So I reckon I'd come across like one or two people at least a day that I really like talking to. Yeah. Um, that's pretty good um, rate, I think. Yeah. Do you sort of keep in contact with any of them or not really? I mean, we'll keep in contact for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's funny because, you know, sometimes first year students are often, they come to you the most because yeah. they, they're trying to work out how everything works and you help them a lot. Yeah. And then they never talk to you again yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, sucks. Um, but that's okay because like, it's just a continuing thing. Like it's one like day cycle. you'll be gone. Yeah. Um, that's okay. There'll be replacement. Yeah. Nice people. Um, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, that's kind of part of it. It's like, cause I've been here for 14 years and that's yeah. like, you know, that's like, how many degrees is that? Yeah, that's plenty. like four or five degrees. Yeah. So it's, it's, people are always, there's always new people and always, yeah. um, people who don't know anything Yeah. Oh. and I can help. Yeah. Helpful Darian right here. And we have like a quick two other, actually three questions left because we're running at a solid one hour and three minutes. Three minutes above the promised time. <laughs> so, Darren, you know, the quick deep end. What do you think the meaning of life is for you? Oh, God. <laughs> the meaning of life. Um, well, I, there's a good quote by this Russian poet, and, it, and it's... Um, He's, he says, don't die before your death, oh, yeah. which I love. Um, and that's, it kind of says to me that you, you don't give up. Um, whether that's the meaning of life or not, like, yeah. I don't know, but it's, it's like until you're dead, yeah. you've got to just get up and try, do your best for that day. Yeah. Um, pretty good. I don't think there's anything more. Um, I've come to the point where I don't think there's anything more to it than that. 
Um, but it's just like, keep going, yeah. you know, keep trying. That's good. Um, don't just become a, you know, a bitter, twisted shell, because it's very yeah, easy to too. become that. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, where there is life, there is hope, they say. Yeah, that too, yeah. Yeah, okay. And then, so what is your perfect day in the life, Darren? What time do you wake up? Oh, too early these days. Probably about five or six now, but Hi yeah, yeah. Um, perfect day would probably be sleep in for a bit, yeah. like I used to when I was young. Yeah. Could sleep until twelve, but um, just have nothing to do. Like, because life these days is so busy, yeah. um, it'd be good to have just nothing to do, and then to to let your brain have the space. Because what happens is all these things that you have to do kind of push out creativity. Yeah. That's really annoying. Um, you kind of have to just empty your mind of all that stuff that you need to do to kind of be creative. So that would be my perfect day is just, just you know, just leave me alone. Yeah. You know. Peace and quiet. Yeah. Oh, sounds good. And the final question is obviously, how was your podcast experience, Darren? It was good, very good. Better than you thought, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I think I told you before, but I'm not a big podcasting person. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. I mean... I mean, now you will be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I think, um, you know, anybody... Well, not every, anybody, but a lot of people have very interesting... I'm not saying that I'm that I interesting. I mean, you are interesting. But um, at least... Like, I know that podcasters, podcasts are very popular. Yeah. And people listen to a lot of them. And it's like, well, maybe I should try more. Ah, there you hmm. go. And if someone's asking you for podcast recommendations, what are you going to say? Infinite possibilities. possibilities. Wow. Too good. Too good. Been in the business for too long, they say. <laughs> so, we're finished. Let's go. Bye. Bye.